Claire O'Neill, welcome to 7.30. Good evening, Sarah. Lovely to be with you. Now, Christine Nixon identifies what she calls grotesque abuses in the system, targeting by criminals, an, educa an education system easily rorted and very weak compliance. How did the immigration system deteriorate to this point? Well, it deteriorated to this point after 10 years of utter neglect of the system by the former government. Uh, Andrew Giles and I have been sharing the leadership of this system now for just over a year, and I can tell you that we see um, vast incompetencies in the way that this system has been run. It has been starved of resources by Peter Dutton, who was presiding over this system for a long period of time. Uh, it just hasn't had the sufficient, the sufficient focus, energy and attention on the migration system that's absolutely required. And as Christine Nixon's report shows that we released today, this has facilitated um, widespread abuse of the system, exploitation of migrants who come to Australia under it. And at its pointiest end, Christine Nixon points to the fact that we've got a situation here where criminal gangs from around the world are actually looking to Australia and seeing facilitated abuse through the migration system as a great benefit of coming to operate here. So, so we've got a real mess to fix up. Let me understand this because it's, it's completely at odds with the coalition's identity as being very tough on borders and including mm. Peter Dutton's identity. How do you explain that? Oh, look, I mean, this is just an amazing fraud that's been perpetrated on the Australian people here. We've had Peter Dutton, who's built his political career, talking to everyone about what a tough guy he is on borders, and at the same time he's been cutting funding to compliance, cutting funding to the immigration section of the department, and on his watch, literally people with criminal convictions walked into the country and oversaw large rings of human trafficking and sexual slavery, literally the worst crimes that can be committed on this great earth. Uh, so I think Peter Dutton's got a lot to answer for here. Yep. But at the end of the day, this is my problem now. It falls in my lap mm. and Andrew Giles and I are very focused on fixing it. You've had this report for a number of months now. Why are you, why are you yeah. only releasing it today? So we're releasing it today because we have done a power of policy work to support the actual answers to the problems that we are um, seeing identified by Christine Nixon. Um, Andrew Giles and I actually want to fix the problems that Christine Nixon has identified. And today we announced five really significant changes to how we will run immigration compliance in our country. We announced a surge of resources into a range of parts of the system which deal with immigration compliance. Effectively, we are rebuilding a broken system. And it's not the only piece of immigration reform work which is being undertaken at the moment. There's a big opportunity piece here as well because this is a powerful system for benefit for our country. But uh, today, integrity is a big focus and integrity is a problem that we're addressing. So just a couple of questions on that. You're very critical of mm. Peter Dutton for cutting the number of compliance yeah. staff from mm. 365 to 203 over about a mm. decade. You're yeah. proposing increasing it to two, that number to 290. Given mm -hmm. the circumstances that you've just described, why wouldn't you mm -hmm. restore it to the larger number, the original number? Yeah. Well, fixing this problem is going to take a little bit of time, Sarah. Um, if I can just say it's not just the restoration of those compliance numbers that we announced today. We also talked about a $28 million investment we will make in biometrics, so making mm. sure that people who come into the country that we're recording exactly who they are and why they're here. Uh, we announced significant funding increase to OMARA, which is the organisation which regulates migration agents just, who just unfortunately stay with have this, been caught just, in this problem. Just stay with this idea of the yep. com compliance, though. Are you saying that that biometric capacity replaces the need for the individuals to serve in that Absolutely. compliance staff position? Absolutely not, Sarah. Then why not, um, so then why not restore to the previous numbers? So so there is a range of investments that are being made here and I just want to point also to the $85 million that our government has spent so far on uh, visa processing, which is an important part of this system. So all up, you have a package of um, measures here that's well in excess of $200 million. Uh, but I just say to your point, um, it's true technically that we're not restoring exactly the highest number of ever compliance officers we've had as a country. And can I just say, you know, I'm talking to you today about uh, egregious problems in our migration system. If you had Jason Clare, our Education Minister, on tonight, he'd be telling you a similar story of incompetence in the education system. You'd hear it from Mark Butler in the health system. You'd hear it from all of our ministers who are grappling with messes left to us by the incompetent former government. We can't fix every single problem that they created overnight. Mm. But I'd have to say that I think the investment that we're making here is pretty impressive and it is going to make a meaningful difference to this problem. And just to go back to that point you made about Peter Dutton um, allowing criminals to enter the country, he says mm. that... Uh, in the time that he was in the position in Home Affairs, he cancelled 
more people's visas for criminal activity than you have. Is that correct? Uh, well, I'd have to look at the numbers, Sarah, but um, the metric for whether you're a good immigration minister is not kicking people out of the country. We all kick people out of the country as immigration minister. It's mm -hmm. something that we're required to do and something that I do without any compunction quite frequently through my department and through Immigration Minister Andrew Giles. Um, I would just say, Sarah, um, let's not... We've got a report from a highly reputable person here who tells us that Peter Dutton presided over the breaking of our migration system. That's the bottom line. Uh, saying that he kicked people out of the country is just, you know... That that is just the price of entry to being Migration Minister of this country. Um, it doesn't excuse at all the fact that he presided over a system-wide breakdown. So what I'd like to see from Peter Dutton today is, frankly, a bit of contrition and a bit of taking responsibility. People have been really hurt by his failures to regulate our borders. We're talking about literally rings of women that were caught in sexual slavery in our country and an individual who should have been captured and deported long before he was uh, recently by our government. So I'd say there's real questions to answer here. And if you can't be a good immigration minister, I don't know why you think you can be prime minister. Now, the review also finds, this is in the education area, that um, there's a number here of 15% of vocational training students have withdrawn from the course, which mm -hmm. presumably was the vehicle for them coming to Australia, mm -hmm. but have stayed in Australia. Why yeah. hasn't something like that, a number as large as that, raised red flags? For me, it has raised red flags, and that's one of the reasons why we commissioned Christine Nixon to conduct this review. Uh, one of the important changes that we are making is proper um, support and resourcing of an organisation called ASQA, which is the regulator for our VET sector. Christine Nixon identified that VET is an, an important part of our economy here in Australia, but it is also a vulnerability for us in the migration system. And that stat that you mentioned there is one. Um, I can tell you that my department at the moment is refusing almost half of all applications to study vet courses in this country due to integrity issues. So this is a serious problem and one that Brendan O'Connor, the skills minister, and I are working really fiercely on together. I want to talk about the protection visa system. Um, mm. It's clear in this report that it's being exploited at, at, yeah. at a considerable scale. How do you ensure the integrity of a system like that that is mm. very complex without denying asylum seekers natural justice? Yeah, so this is the critical policy question that Andrew Giles and I have been grappling with over the previous months. Um, if I can just give a little bit of context to your viewers, uh, we're talking here about onshore asylum claims, so people who are in Australia under a different visa and make an application for asylum onshore. Um, what is really clear from the data and the experience of my department is that people are making unmeritorious asylum claims and they are doing it because the way we manage those claims allows them long periods of time in Australia with work rights that they would not otherwise be able to have. So when you add up the delays in my department, the delay in the Administrative Appeals Tribunal, the delay in the Federal Court, you can be in Australia for nine or ten years under the current system without having to have a proper reason to be here and get work rights. Now, one of the things that I'm really concerned about with this system is that the people who are most hurt by these unmeritorious claims are people who are genuinely trying to claim asylum for genuine reasons. They are stuck in this broken process and some of them are waiting 10 or 11 years to get legitimate claims processed so that they've got some sense of certainty. So I'm very exercised about this problem and we will have a uh, reform announcement on this matter to be announced tomorrow. I want to ask you a question about Mike Pizzullo and the revelations uh, of his involvement in politics. We understand there's a review underway, but do these re revelations tell us that public service objectivity at the highest levels is really a myth? Oh, Sarah, so just with regard to your specific question about the Secretary Pizzullo, um, we are a government that runs proper processes. I quite rightly have referred the conduct that uh, has been reported to the Public Service Commissioner, and I'm not going to make any uh, political commentary on that matter until the Public Service Commissioner comes back to me. Um, can I say that my experience of being a minister, as I've been for the last 18 months, is just enormous respect that I have for people who are leading our public service and the many thousands of people who around the country are doing the patriotic thing and coming to work every day to better their nation. Um, I have enormous respect for the work that they do. I love working with the public servants in my department and um, we've got a big job to do to fix the system together and I work with them very well on that job. When will you be releasing the review into Mike Pizzullo's political activity? Uh, the review has not been handed to me by the Australian Public Service Commissioner, so when that review uh, progresses, I'll be able to provide further information. But as I say, not appropriate for me to comment on uh, just at this stage. Claire O'Neill, thank you very much indeed for joining us.
Great. Thanks, thanks Sarah. Much appreciated.